Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking about how to prepare for your podiatric board part 1. I took my test in July 11, 2017 and I, I felt like I did a pretty good job of preparing for it. So I'm going to show you 5 tips on how I did in board part 1. So the first, one, first thing I want to talk about is know yourself before you start preparing for this board. Now, what I mean by that is know your weaknesses and strength in the material that you have to cover. For example, if you do well in a microbiology class, then you know that you don't have to spend as much time studying for that material when you're doing the preparation. Contrastingly, if you're weak on, say, anatomy, then you do know, you know that you have to put an extra effort to cover the areas that you're weak on. You have to review more multiple times instead of just covering one time. And also, when you're studying, everyone will have a different pace of studying. Some people may be able to cover 40 pages in a day. Some people may be able to cover 20 pages in a day. If, if one's not bad or good, it's just it's just different pace. It's just that at the end of the day, you you guys are gonna study the same amount. That's the way I see it. So, don't worry about what, how other people, how fast other people may be studying. Just worry about how much you can cover in a day and schedule your study preparation appropriately. The second tip I want to give you guys is during all this board preparation in, make sure to include certain exercise in, in your, in your uh, regimen. I would suggest about three to four times a week is really appropriate for you to kind of boost that metabolism, keep your body fresh and also helps you maintain information that you study. The, I mean, everyone knows that physical health, cor good physical health correlates with good uh, memory, good uh, understanding material, critical thinking, and all that good stuff. So when you guys are studying, always take a break to go out and go to the gym or work out or have, you know, do something physical so that your body is fresh for the next set of uh, session for studying. Third thing I want to talk about is the study technique. There are lots of different study techniques that people use. Uh, people will talk to each other uh, when they're studying and that helps if you're more of a verbal and like auditory person. Uh, for me, I like to write stuff down. Uh, and some people like to uh, listen to videos that are pre-recorded. But the point is you need to find your study technique before you start studying it. Don't change your study technique in the middle of your board preparation because it would just not you it would take a while for you to get used to that study technique and you would just be wasting time essentially. Um, I recommend my technique is where I write it down it's an old fashioned way, but I would just scribble things down on paper after I read a concept or a passage. So if I read a paragraph of information, I will summarize that in one sentence and I'll write it down in a piece of paper. So what I what that does is I'm basically telling my brain I was able to summarize a passage or a difficult concept and then I was able to make it into my own information and I was able to write it down in a paper. So it takes I'm go, pushing the material through my brain in a, in a different way and then I think that helps me uh, maintain information, memorize things better. Some people I know uh, do study group, study buddies where they talk to each other. That if that works for you, that's great. But the downside of that is when when it's like like 12 p.m. or one in the after, like 1 a.m. and after midnight or something, you won't have that study buddy to help you study with. You may be dependent on that person, and you guys have to remember that if that's the only way for you to study. It's kind of it's sometimes it's risky if that person isn't there to study with you. And remember, it's going to be grilling two to three months studying time, and sometimes you may not want to see that person also for the next couple of days. So if that's the case, then how are you going to study for it? The next tip I want to give you is timing. So what I mean by that is make sure you guys create a schedule and outline what material, how long you got to study every day. Generally, I'll recommend three months of preparation for the sport part one. So you hear some people saying, oh, they just study for a couple of weeks or even uh, four weeks and they pass. 
and that's great. But the way I see it is the longer you study and the more committed you are to preparing for this test, the lower the chance that you're going to fail this test. That's the way I see it. You could get lucky and study only four, two weeks and pass the board, but it's just a matter of do you want to really take that chance. So I would say three months is a really good time to prepare for this uh, part one test. If it's any longer than that, I think that may be a little bit detrimental because you will start uh, having anxiety attacks or, or your performance may peak down as you, enter, as you uh, get closer to your test date. So, so schedule your time with each day with uh, materials that you want to study. So I had classes during some of my days of the week, so I had to revolve around those class times. So I would start studying at 1 p.m. or I would start studying at 10 a.m. It will really depend, but the idea is you want to get around, I will say, 8 to 12 hours of studying per day. Eight hours is really good. If it's like an efficient studying, eight hours, I think it will work for you. Eight hours is really short time in a day. You will soon realize that. It's just like eight to five. But for me, like it takes me a little bit, a couple of hours in the morning to get my gears running. So I will say I would end up studying around like, I will stare at a book at least like 12 hours, 12 to 14 hours, 12 hours a day, I will say. I will wake up, eat breakfast, uh, go to the gym and whatnot and then come back, go to class, come back and study, and I'll generally stay up till about 12 p.m. And I'll generally get about five, I would say six to seven hours of sleep uh, when I was preparing for this board. Um, make sure you guys get enough sleep. So when you're scheduling this, sleep is primary, one of the most important things you have to include in your planning, because that allows you to uh, maintain the information and that allows you to be fresh the next day to start studying for boards again. And you repeat this cycle over and over again. So you need to be somewhat disciplined in order to carry out this plan where you have a daily structure of I gotta wake up at a certain time, go to class, go to a gym, and then study. And you repeat that again. So timing, make sure you guys prepare, give yourself enough time to study for this. And I, I will recommend three months. So the last thing I want to talk about is the materials that you have to have, to have in order to study for board part one. There are some crucial materials that you need to have, and there are some that are, it's okay if you have it. It's more like an accessory, in my opinion. So for, I'll cover, cover each topic, and I'll, t I'll tell you what I use to study for that. For general anatomy, I used uh, BRS, board review, I think it's board review study guide, BRS anatomy. Now I'll just sit through the pages and look at the important concept, like the exceptions and the general circulation and the big blood vessels and the muscle for general anatomy and I will do a couple of, I'll pick random questions at the end of the chapter I think the key is if you are able to do those random questions at the end of the chapter then you know you're ready because in terms of the difficulty of the questions I don't, I don't think it goes beyond the BRS book really the BRS book focuses well on the questions that they uh, kind of like and the level of difficulty kind of aligns with the board part one test. So I did BRS mainly. If you have a general anatomy text from your school, you guys could use that too. But for me, I focused on other areas than my general anatomy because I was a uh, TA for the general anatomy for last, uh, during my second year, so I was able to revisit the cadavers, review some of the materials with the first year. So that kind of helped me. So this goes back to the idea that knowing yourself, knowing your weaknesses and strength, it allows you to kind of, allows you to put attention on areas that you're weak on and kind of go light on the areas that you're strong. So that's what I did for anat general anatomy. For lower anatomy, since we're podiatrists and lower anatomy is our specialty, I did, I, I used a lot, I went through a lot of material. The one thing material I went through was a, the, there's like a 240 slides, uh, four slides per page, like document from Scholl. Um, they had a pretty good, they focused on the individual bones and the ligaments really well. So I like that about uh, the Scholl's. If, if, you, if, you, if you guys have friends in Scholl that may be able to provide that document, that's, that's one way to get that. 
The second book that I used was Dr. Sutherland's Our Clinical Professors, a brilliant man. He wrote a book for lower uh, extremity anatomy, and that book was on, on point. I think that book covered ossification centers and like um, the ears that they ossify, fuse, and it was a holistic lower anatomy book that was really helpful in, in getting the lower anatomy questions uh, right in the test, I feel like. That was probably the best book for the lower anatomy for me. Other books that I looked for lower anatomy was my uh, lower anatomy textbook. I went through a couple of times for that. Well, I, I went over that multiple times when I was taking the class, but I just reviewed a couple of times more. And I also went over the Ohio book. Uh, there's a coloring book and a textbook. Uh, I went through those. But out of all those books for the lower extremity, I think my uh, Dr. Sutherland's lower extremity anatomy book was the best by far. The next, to next topic is microbiology. I mainly use BRS flashcards. Uh, those BRS flashcards, there's other uh, first day US MLE flashcards. Compared to those, that flashcard, BRS flashcards are really dense. They have a lot of information. They have uh, organism, they have like uh, unique features, treatment, symptoms, and patho pathogenesis, all that stuff put into a flashcard. So it's not really a fla flashcard, it's more like a note. But if you're able to master that flashcard, I think you'll be ready for microbiology. I went through that flashcard four to five times. Each time I go through, I pick up, try to, I try to pick up new information. I, first time I go through, I just relate illnesses with the organism. I, second time I go, I look at the pathogenesis. Third time I go through, I look at the maybe the treatment, you know. And I just try keep try to keep up, keep picking up new things every time I look at the flashcard. It helps me understand the material better and better, and also helps you motivate to continue studying that way. I know some people use Sketchy Micro. I uh, heard that that works for a lot of people. And if that, if you, if you're into those, into that visual learning techniques, then that go for it. But for me, I use BRS Microbiology, and I think I was perfectly fine with Micro. I think Micro was one of the strongest section I felt uh, when I was taking that test. I don't think I missed many for Micro at all. If I missed any, the second, uh, the other topic is in, that is in the board is pharmacology. Again, there are sketchy farms out there. If you have that resource, you could go ahead and use it. But for me, I use BRS Pharmacology. The flashcards, again, are very dense. They have a lot of information compared to the uh, first aid, I think, uh, flashcards. Um, but I chose to do BRS. I went. I did look through those for a first aid flashcards too, but I really like the BRS and I recommend BRS uh, flashcards. Um, Every time you go, I went through those flashcards four times or so. Every time we went through, I looked at different. I try to keep uh, pick up different things. That's the key. So I did that. BRS flashcards were really helpful. Pharmacology was a little bit. Uh, it was, it was okay. I think I did okay in pharmacology too. So I would say BRS flashcards were really good too. Next topic is biochemistry. Biochemistry is a very small fraction in the board test. Some people don't even look at any biochemistry when they uh, are preparing for the board. Um, I, did, I looked at the USMLE book, and I think that suffice for biochemistry, really. If you understand the, the main metabolic reactions in our body, and then the, the reactant and the product of those like uh, rate-determining steps, that's all you need to know. There's only like 15 processes that are important to know, I think. And if you know all those, you're good to go. All right, the next topic is physiology. I use BRS physiology, similar to the BRS nat general anatomy. I would go through each chapter quickly, and then I would look through a couple of questions, about 45 questions per chapter to make sure I understand the concept. I'll pick random questions. I'll pick one from the beginning, you know, two or three in the middle, and then two or three in the back section of the questions. Um, I think that was pretty good for physiology. If you guys have your physiology textbook, you guys could go use that too, but I really just used the BRS physiology and I think that was uh, oh, pro, uh, that was good enough for me. Um, I like physiology, so during, during when I was taking physiology, I was pretty good at it, so I, for me, that was good enough for me. Okay. Now, the last section is pathology. Um, 
Um, I did Pathoma videos and they took, they took me all, like a whole week just to go through those Pathoma videos and I went, I went through it like two times the speed. Um, if you guys are short on time, I wouldn't recommend it because it takes a while, but Pathoma videos are a really good way to kind of build your foundation. So, in terms of pathology, that's what I did, but I don't, um, other than that, I wouldn't really, not focus on pathology, but I would focus on the other areas and know associated illnesses is what you need to focus when you, when they say pathology, that's what you need to focus on. Um, and the other book that I, the main book that I started my study was the USMLE First Aid book. And that book gives you a good foundation of the, each area that you need to study. I went through it two times, but what I realized is that USMLE First Aid book is not really a podiatry. Right? It's not made for podiatry board part one. So a lot of times, I feel like it gives you a good foundation, but it doesn't really help you as some people might claim to be. Um, I wouldn't recommend it going through like four or five times really. If you go through it thoroughly two times, it's good enough. And focus on the other areas individually is what I recommend. So like again, for podiatry, podiatry uh, since it's a podiatry test, focus on the lower extremity because it's a decent chunk of the the test. Lastly, I just want to review a couple of things I, I went over. So, the must-have materials for preparation for podiatric part one is for lower anatomy. I would say uh, Dr. Southern. That was really helpful. Dr. Southern lower extremity anatomy for microbiology and pharmacology. BRS flashcards are really helpful, and the USMLE book for general foundation of the material. I think those four things you need to have because uh, those are huge, those are subject with decent chunks and the portion that the questions are made out of. Biochemistry could be covered in the USMLE book. Physiology also could be covered in a uh, USMLE book along with some BRS questions. General anatomy will also be co uh, covered in the BRS book. I think that's what I recommend if you guys have time. But the four things I mentioned earlier are the four must things that you need to have. So follow the five tips I gave you and always have a positive outlook and when you're preparing for this board. Believe that you could pass and I'm pretty sure you guys will pass. I mean, statistically speaking, majority of you guys pass. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, send me a message. And if you want to see more videos like this and, and want to support me, please remember to subscribe. And thank you.